Okay, so now I'd like to go over two other types of problems you might see in terms in those problems. We have um, another uh, group of problems here dealing with descriptive and inferential statistics. So what's the difference between descriptive statistics and inferential statistics? So this problem deals with that. And the other one I would want to go over are this up. We can briefly discuss parameter estimation research. I haven't covered that really. And then problem seven is methods of knowing. All right, so let's briefly go over terms within each of these problems. Let's start with question five here, difference between inferential and descriptive statistics, okay? So unfortunately, I have to read this whole paragraph before you start answering questions. But let me d try to make the difference or um, here, uh, make this distinction between these two different types. Okay, so what is descriptive statistics? So descriptive statistics just tries to analyze data, okay? So you're given data, say, in a large spreadsheet, like an Excel spreadsheet or in a, a data file, and if you were going to present this to a group of people, say, you can't just, I know, give throw this book of data at these people, right? You have to analyze the data form. You have to make it more palatable, and you have to package the data in a form that they can understand. And this is done through either graphs, so you can make a chart. Um, you can do this through describing um, what are called um, ways of analyzing the, the whole data and boiling it down to uh, simple things like, um, for example, the mean, the average, okay? Uh, that's, these are called measures of central tendency. So the mean, the average of all uh, the data, for example, the average weight of a group of groundhogs in an area, that would be a way of boiling down the data. You could also describe um, what is called the, um, the range. So you could look at the smallest weight, the largest weight, and call, find the difference, and that's called the range of the data. You can call it, calculate what is called the standard deviation, which basically is a measure of how variable the data is. The data, if the data is like, there's a, the weights were all over the, the, the plot, right? There's a large number of, the, of the, these groundhogs that are heavy, a large number which are light, large number that are in the middle. See, that's very, very variable data. If there's all, they were all kind of the same weight, then that data has very little variability. So these are always processing data to make it more palatable. And that whole, uh, those, that, that whole area is called descriptive statistics, just to kind of process data in the form of charts or graphs, tables, just to make it more, you can capture what's happening with the data much more quickly with descriptive statistics. Now, as opposed to descriptive statistics, we have what is called uh, inferential statistics, which in inferential statistics, you try to make inferences, okay, uh, or guesses or conclusions uh, based on the data you have uh, measured, okay? So, um, for example, you make conclusions a lot about a population. Suppose, let's go back to my study about the um, the commute uh, distance people travel to northern. So, I mean, I gather data from a sample of people here. It's not as big as the whole group, or the whole population, but then I'm going to deduce from the data I gather from that sample and induce data for the whole population of those students. I say, well, I can build what is called sometimes called a confidence interval based on the data I gather on that sample. And I'm going to say, I think most people at northern or the whole group travels about this much. And so that would be called inferential statistics. You make inferences or guesses about the whole population based on, say, a sample. So I hope that uh, clarifies the difference between differential and descriptive and inferential statistics. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem, which has to deal with methods of knowing. Um, so let me go to problem seven here. So we've all acquired knowledge in different ways. And one of the primary ways we acquire knowledge when we're young is through the method of authority, okay? So if your parents tell you, you know, that plate is hot or that pan is hot, don't touch it. You know, that's a method of authority. Or look both ways before you cross the road. That's a method of authority, okay? They told us that. And we just kind of believe these people. 
I mean, maybe we have to touch the pen once to really believe them, but yeah, eventually we learn to trust their word. Um, for exa another example is I've never been up into space. I've never seen the Earth, you know, up in space, but I believe it's round, okay? Um, so this is another method of authority. I believe that, you know, their atoms make up, you know, all, all our material, all the material we see here. So I've never seen an atom like in a in a really good electronic microscope or anything like that. But I just I trust what other people have done. That is a method of authority. Then we have method. Let's go to method intuition. Okay. So not all knowledge we gain is is based on just logical data. Okay. So we don't we don't always you know. So you want to solve a problem, say we don't like sit down and just write down, you know, on a piece of paper, you know, how we're going to solve the problem. We don't envision, you know, you know, point A to point B and every other step in between. We don't always do that when we solve a problem. Sometimes it just problems come to us, you know, you know like for example, you know, you may not know how to solve a problem when you go to bed and you wake up in the morning and somehow your mind has processed that information in a way where you have some more insight into it. So that's kind of a method of intuition. Another example would be you know, sometimes you meet people and you just get a weird vibe from a person. You know, you don't know why, but you know, some sometimes you're getting just weird these signals. Would that be another method of intuition? Okay. Um, 